Hi, welcome to my channel, English Academic Facilitator. Here's Sapali with another important lesson that many of you find somewhat vague or rather difficult. That's none other than analysis of unseen poems. The reason for your confusion lies on your uncertainty of the techniques you need to employ in a poem that you have never seen or never learnt. This usually comes out of your anthology of poems you learn within your syllabus. Please note that this assessment is common to both Cambridge and Edexcel IGCSC English language and English literature papers. No matter whether it's a poem or a prose, these techniques are mostly the same. Alright? In short, these techniques are common to any syllabus you follow or any examination you are taking. According to my long-term teaching experience with London Olival candidates, what I found is the majority seems to get confused with its techniques when analysing un unseen texts. This particular analysis does not mean the general analysis of a poem. You are supposed to give an in-depth analysis of the poem and as this is labelled as an unseen poem, you have all the right to visualise it in any way you like. But remember, it is acceptable as long as you support your points with evidence. Alright? So let's see what's wrong with you in scoring good marks as you do for the other questions in the paper. Here we go. In your unseen poem, here are the elements you need to consider in your analysis. First, look at the title and think about its relevance to the poem. Then look at the subject matter the poet is discussing. And next, pay attention to the tone and the style it's written. And then get ready to write your interpretation of the poem as you visualize. After that, scan it for language used by the poet as well as the imagery employed to make it more understandable and more interesting to the reader. And then check with the form and structure of the stanzas and the coherence or link within and between stanzas. And then if there are sound effects employed to make it more punchy, find them out as well. Finally, get ready to give an evaluative conclusion to your analysis. So, these are the techniques you need to follow in analysing an unseen poem to score full marks. Remember, you need not to worry about the word limit or the length of your analysis. And uh, your answer should be qualitative and not quantitative. All right. So let's go for detailed description and later sample analysis. Our first element is the title. Sometimes title is written as a symbol. If there is a symbolic value, mention it. If there is special expectation the poet needs to elucidate, you can mention it. Or if it expresses any genre, style or tone, you can take it out. If you don't have anything special, just mention in brief what information is given by the title. Next element happens to be the subject. You can brief these things appear on the screen. You can include basic situation, people involved, the speaker and the listener and the events involved or the subject matter involved and better use a separate paragraph for this. Tone is the general character or attitude of the poem. What kind of emotions it expresses and the mood it's spoken are also important to analyse. It can be angry, cynical, sarcastic, resigned, melancholic, etc. Next is the style. Style is the way in which emotions are expressed, whether it is expressed in a formal way or a logical way or an incoherent way, where the ideas are not well organized, 
or epigrammatic way where ideas are briefly expressed but quite comprehensively or if the ideas are ordered to the point etc next comes the form form is how the poem is organized or divided up in this section we analyze if it is freely structured or well organized and then uh, whether it is divided into stanzas if so how long they are and uh, if they are vary in length or similar and further how the stanzas relate to each other whether it's a perspective shift or a movement towards a climax under this section you need to pay attention toward the lines as well whether all the lines are stopped at the end or is there an enjambment enjambment is sentences stop in the middle of the line in order to build a more complex narrative within a poem or uh, it allows a thought to overflow across the line Analyzing structure is also important though most students pay little attention to form and structure this includes the sequence of events how they are told and how everything is threaded together under structure we can talk about how punctuation is used if there is a rhyme scheme or internal rhyming and also analyze if there is a rhythm in the poem Next section is your personal interpretation as you visualize the poem. Of course, you can find general interpretations from many sources, uh, but there are many other techniques we discuss here that you need to consider and analyze in this task. So, they are little rare to find, so that this lesson would be a significant one for those who are looking for them. All right? in this section you need to concentrate on the idea or theme or belief that the poet is exploring and then what you actually think about the poem make sure that you use evidence or quotations from the poem to support your interpretation then you need to analyze the way the poem is written whether in the register of an adult or teeming with details of the past this is the language the poet uses whether it's simple or complex lyrical or conversational formal or factual and then whether it's figurative or literal and then if sensory language is used such as similes metaphors or personification all these things come under language analysis hope you won't get confused then comes imagery imagery is the figurative language used to evoke a sensory experience or create a picture with words for a reader for example what you see hear taste smell and feel in addition if there are patterns such as semantic field or repetition and finally if there are symbols used some poets use sound effects that contribute to tone feeling meaning or the mood they are alliteration assonance and onomatopoeia if there is a rhythm used whether it's free or rigid and what its effect is so these are the things that you need to analyze under sounds after analyzing all the above mentioned aspects now you come to the final analysis that is evaluative conclusion there you need to mention the meaning of the poem as a whole and then how the poet wants you to respond and also what belief the poet is communicating or the themes or ideas exposed and finally if the poet reaches a conclusion or leave the discussion open by giving food for thought Now let's analyze this poem Baby Sitting written by Gillian Clark. First read the poem Baby Sitting. I'm sitting in the wrong room listening for the wrong baby. I don't love this baby. She's sleeping a snuffly roseate bubbling sleep. 
she is fair she is perfectly acceptable child i am afraid of her if she wakes she will hate me she will shout her her hot midnight rage her nose will stream disgustingly and the perfume of her breath will fail to enchant me to her i will represent absolute abandonment for her it will be worse than for the lover cold in lonely sheets worse than for the woman who waits a moment to collect her dignity beside the bleached bone in the terminal ward as she rises sobbing from the monstrous land stretching for milk familiar comforting she will find me and between us two it will not come it will not come i'll show you how i analyzed uh, this poem for examination purposes remember you can't easily get this type of analysis from anywhere else because uh, what you find mostly is general analysis that won't meet all the requirements that an unseen analysis is expected for examination purposes all right so follow these steps this is the opening of my analysis i use different colors for different elements uh, to differentiate each and every sections clearly this is analyzing the title it's about the information given by the title the title of the poem baby sitting by gillian clark projects the image of the caregiver who is watching and caring for someone else's child in the absence of its parent My next step is discussing the subject matter. I used few sentences in this section to summarize what's expressed in the poem. Let's read it. It is focused on the emotions of a babysitter and the emotions she projects on the baby. It explores the hard times of babysitting for not being able to connect with the baby due to her own fears and abandonments as she is not her mother. and possibly it reminds her of her own child who is left elsewhere in the midnight in order to care for a stranger's child the emotions revolve around the babysitter by looking at a baby who is sleeping alone in a strange room without the warmth of her mother next two parts are tone and style The tone of the babysitter is a resigned one as the speaker has accepted her service that is not desired but is probably unchangeable. It is written in an epigrammatic style as it conveys a vivid idea in brief but quite comprehensively. Next I discussed the form The poem is a free verse written in two equal stanzas of 10 lines. It's organized in such a way that first stanza reveals her true emotions towards her service and how she feels about the baby, while the second stanza implies how she projects the emotions of the baby towards her and her cynical behavior. Some lines are not stopped at the end. So this enjambment is employed to create the rising emotion of the speaker in order to pull the reader from one line to the next. It is freely structured with no punctuation, no rhyme scheme and not even an internal rhyming pattern. Next I enter the most important and the la- largest section. Here I analyze why poet calls the place a wrong room. and the baby a wrong baby and why she cannot connect to this baby as well let's read it the very first line however informs the reader that there is something amiss as the babysitter claims she is sitting in the wrong room lines 2 and 3 further explain the situation of the babysitter by letting the reader know that she has the wrong baby and she doesn't love this baby By claiming to have the wrong baby, the babysitter is heavily implying that she has a baby of her own and she is not with that child, but instead she is babysitting. Perhaps that is the reason she is unable to connect to this baby and love her. 
By being a perfectly acceptable child, she lets the reader know that there is no fault of the baby sleeping away, not knowing the absence of her parents yet. Extending my interpretation, I also analyzed how the speaker projects the expressions of the baby when she wakes up and how she feels about the baby. Let's read. If she wakes, she will hate her, stems from her own lack of connection to this baby. Moreover, the negative words and expressions used to project the baby's behavior, such as rage, disgustingly, hate, shout, worse, together with the perfume of her breath will fail to enchant her and her nose will stream disgustingly, reveal her disapproval of the baby. The baby's absolute abandonment is reflected by the embodiment of neglect and desertion by the babysitter. At the same time, she knows it is easier for the mother to tolerate her child's tantrums because the smell of her baby's breath is literally enchanting as she lovingly carries the baby in an intimate embrace to comfort her. Towards the end, it is analysed how she makes the reader begin to understand the reasons behind her coldness and what she wants to em emphasise at the end. Let's read that part. The reader is now beginning to better understand the babysitter and the reasons behind her apparent coldness. She genuinely feels bad for the baby, the fact that she is not in arm's reach of her mother as all babies should be. Finally, she emphasizes the sense of emptiness and loneliness felt by both the baby and the babysitter by repeating, it will not come. Next, I moved on to the use of language and then moved on to the sensory language she employed to stretch the boundaries of reality to make it more vivid. Let's read it. She has written this poem in the register of an adult by using simple language enriched with sensory language such as metaphors, personification and patterns like repetition. Beside the bleached bone combines alliteration and metaphor to create a, a harrowing image of a person dying in hospital. She will be like a lover who wakes to find her loved one gone and replaced by an imposter. Sheets are personified by the adjective lonely in order to stretch the boundaries of reality to make it more vivid. Then I analyzed uh, the imagery used. Visual, auditory, gustatory and tactile imagery are used with snuffly shout and sobbing to the ear while stream of her nose visualizes a disgusting feeling towards the baby's appearance. Additionally, perfume of her breath appeals to the sense of smell and coldness to the touch, allowing the reader to clearly see, hear, smell and touch what is happening in the picture. This is linked further to the idea of the child stretching for milk familiar comforting only to find the babysitter. The fact that this is not what she wants is emphasized at the end by the repetition of it will not come at the end which really emphasizes the sense of emptiness and loneliness felt by both baby and the babysitter. Next section is the analysis of the sound effects the poet uses. Let's read it. Some alliterations and assonance are used as sound effect in order to inject focus some melody and rhythm to the poem. The use of assonance, sleeping is snuffly, expresses the breathing sounds of the baby along with the onomatopoeic bubbling sound. In addition, the H alliteration emphasizes the harshness of the sounds in her hot midnight rage. And also, absolute abandonment emphasizes how deserted she is due to the negligence of her mother and the lack of love and affection of the babysitter for the baby. I concluded my analysis with the evaluative conclusion, including the meaning of the poem and how the poet wants you to respond. Let's read it. 
All in all, it happens to be a great work of art by Gillian Clark, who has painted a sensitive picture here, seeing the situation from the point of view of the baby, imagining exactly how it must feel on awakening to find a stranger instead of its mother. She also understands how the babysitter will react, feeling fear because the baby will not welcome her presence. It is a convincing idea, probably a commonplace situation that the reader should take it for granted. Well, now you can confirm with the checklist to make sure that all the areas to be analysed are covered in my essay. Title, Subject, Tone, Style, Form and Structure, Developing and Interpretation, Language, Imagery, Sound, Evaluative Conclusion. Everything is covered. Well, hope the lesson today would be very much helpful for you. If you feel so, don't hesitate to like and subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon to get new video updates. Thanks for watching and bye for now.